You have to be one of them in order to survive here. You can't just walk around, you know, free thinking and knowing, you know, it doesn't mean you know all the things, but knowing a lot of stuff, you know, knowing it's fake, you know, knowing it's the Truman Show, knowing it's a joke. You can't just walk around, you know, like that, seeing through everything, seeing through everyone. Eventually it's going to get to you. Not being able to trust anyone because they are, they're owned by the hive. So when the, well, here's what happens with the hive. They, they're acting like they're your friend and all of a sudden they manifest on you. Right? But it's not them. It's, they've been triggered by remote control. Other people are looking at you through the eyes of that one because they're all connected. And it's just it's a technology. You talk about gang stalking. This is the ultimate. I told you I had this one guy. He, 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 he couldn't pray with me because he was afraid they were listened. He was afraid of me. I said, let me pray with you, brother. You know what I mean? And it was just, he worked at this, uh, this worldwide web store that I had existed back in the, you know, it was kind of a gimmick store where you can walk in and get a website and do a retail space. Kind of a cool concept, but I, I didn't know anything about the internet. So I walked in and I got a website and he worked there. And I just was so fascinated with him. I kept asking him questions like, how do they listen? How, how do they, 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 he goes, they just know, okay? And so if I pray with you, then, you know, then, then something bad's going to happen to me. You know, some, they're going to do something. So I, I just can't, I can't risk it. I said, you go to church and you believe in God and you have a Bible. Yes, but we're not the same. Uh, you want to be free, though, right? Oh, I'd love to be free, but I'm not. They own me. They can hear me. They can see you right now. It's just, you know, once your eyes are open and you know, like, like my eyes are open, he would say, I can see. See what I mean? You can't see. You're, 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 you don't understand all this. You, but I can see it. See, you can't see it, but I can. And it's like, you, so you can't be free because you can see that you are surveilled by this spiritual, um, it's, yes, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a spiritual connection that covers the whole globe where everyone knows everything everywhere, the all-seeing eye. We're all tethered to the same thing. I don't want no trouble, man. It's just cool it, okay? You go your way, I'll go mine, and just. Now, that was about the year. Mm, 2001 going to 2002, about after the World Trade Center, and, you know, uh, probably in the fall, probably about this time of year. And I was fascinated by that, you know, by what he said, because he was just a regular Christian guy, just typical cookie cutter Christian guy, nice, nice hairs, Hispanic guy, you know, uh, goes to church, has a big family values and all that. And, and you know, he's, he's not just in a Hispanic church. He's, he's, he's you know, it's, it's mixed with all kinds of, you know, people and races and whatnot, you know, so it's not about that as the hive. So don't, don't think that it's a. Uh, Meaning connection to uh, the Catholic Church. It's not. It's not that. It's. It's. He's an evangelical, and uh, really nice guy. And I just just thinking back to it, how he he took. It's like he took me off stage for a second and let me know what was going on. You know, I mean, why he couldn't pray with me. He can pray with other people. So when I went to the 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 church system, I went to an evangelical church. The same thing happened there as with this guy. I, I was, became aware of this, of this thing he was talking about. Which would mean that the people participating in it would have, that would mean that the headquarters of Satan would be the church. That would be the, that would be the spirit operating <clears throat> with this guy was the spirit of Satan. And Satan had him in his grip. But he prays in Jesus' name.
Well, I tried, look, I, I went to about seven churches. I tried to find the answer out because it seemed like the churches were the home of the devil. You know, wherever I went, that's where the hive mind, that's where the black magic, that's where, you know, all kinds of horrible things going on. Uh, child abuse, or you name it, just a million things. It's Once you get in there, you realize the opposite is true <clears throat> of the image they put out to the world. It's one thing, but what's really going on and what you're not supposed to see, but you know me, I can see everything. I don't want to. Not everything. No, I can't see everything. I couldn't see what that guy could see. He was explaining it to me. He was like, you know, there are people like you, but you know what, just just uh, get out of here. You know, this is, don't, don't, don't go back to the church. They, they, they don't want you there. Wow. So there really is, so that really is the truth about the whole world. Yeah. And you don't want to go up against it because you don't want, you want to be free, but you don't want, uh, you don't want, uh, you don't want to be hurt by people around you. That's right. But uh, you're a fool to fight it because it's, it's everything, it's everyone, it's everywhere, okay? That's all I'm going to say. I'm out of here. So I, I was like, wow, that was pretty awesome that that guy actually spoke to me like that. I mean, that was a rare gift for me. That I really appreciate that now. And, I, of course, I, I've, I have prayed for him. And, you know, and, and, and whenever he comes to mind, like right now, I just pray this brother is free in Jesus' name. Amen, you know. And we all know what that means, free, don't we? Most Christians, then, in the church system are not really free. It doesn't mean they're going to, you know, quote, go to hell or be cut off. It just means somehow the bond of, of the satanic initiation, right, I guess, which is what why you have babies. You have babies so that you can initiate them into Satanism, right? That's the reason to have kids, right? You have kids so that you can initiate them into Satanism, right? Because that's the first thing you have to do. Dedicate them to Satan so that, you know, they, they will be successful. And then they go to church thinking they're in, but, but it's the same extension, the same system of control from cradle to grave. The ones that don't wind up in that situation are they study them. They study these. They try to figure out what makes them tick. And what they found was that, that people that have say, a certain IQ level or something along those lines, is one of the problems. And so we need to find out how to dumb the people down so they can go ahead and get this thing done. Because everybody, you know, gets, gets, has to be checked in. You know, you can't just have people wandering around, you know, with, with their own thoughts. And, um, you know, or, or, or not contributing <laughs> to the welfare of society. We all need to make our contribution, and if you're if you're if you're not tethered, you're just drifting out there. You know you, you're not making a contribution. You're a blight on humanity. We're not making. I love this word, progress. <laughs> We're not really progressing. I see. Okay. So the idea is to progress toward total annihilation of humanity. Yes, but don't tell the slaves that. Don't tell them that. So the idea of having children is to give them to Satan. Yes, but don't tell them that. That's what ends up happening, but don't say it. So in order to play ball, I would have to like give myself to Satan, agree to the lie, embrace it, and, and then... But I have to be young because it's, it's not easy to indoctrinate. I, I could never be hypnotized. Well, that's going to be a problem. Well, why is that a problem? Because you have to be able to be hypnotized in order to be indoctrinated. You know, you have to be, right, suggestion, hypnotic suggestion has to work because that's what's used a lot of the time. And uh, to, to, you know, otherwise you're going to think that uh, you, you wouldn't be able to uh, connect Another way of looking at it would be, okay, so I'm going to 
I really want the world and I really want that brass ring, so I'm going to do whatever it takes. Okay, kid, come on in. Here's what you got to do. I'll do it. So you got that category too. And then a lot of times those people realize that all that blind ambition that they had has rendered them blind. In other words, they they didn't become the rock star. They didn't get the brass ring. They, they, they thought they were. But now they're so um, locked down, you know, uh, slave-wise, they can't make a move to get out. And they, they, they're disappointed because they never got what they've sold out for. And now they're, you know, they're stuck. And the Lord wants you to know that he will bring you out. Are you ready? Bringing you out means destabilizing the, the earth and the world system to the point where the whole thing starts crumbling in chaos. And then at that point, how much faith are you going to have in your slavery and bondage? None. And also, there'll be no, no hive mind checking up on you. They'll be running because they're all going to be scared to death, uh, not knowing what's happening to them. They're going to be freaked out. And then when they're freaked out, there's your ticket to ride, baby. That's when you get on the train right then. You wait for that moment, and you go, and you don't look back, okay? And you will get out, thanks to Jesus Christ. He will bring you out. And he will set you free. For that to happen, God will give the gift a complete collapse of everything. And you will be free. Let's face it. It's not going to happen from you deciding one day you're just going to do the right thing. Or me deciding... You know, this or that. I mean, I make decisions that God laughs at me. You know, it's like I just have to go moment to moment. But the Lord will get you out. And that means that that kid that told me all that stuff, the Lord's going to get him out too if he hasn't already. Because he had the courage, right? He showed courage right there. He showed courage to explain exactly what was going on, exactly what he was facing, what he was up against. And the Lord will reward that courage. I know he will. Because I, I could tell the heart of this man was he wanted out. But he was stuck in the hive. In the hive. And he said, they can hear you. You know what I mean? So they could, like they could hear me talking to him. And they could see through his eyes to look at me. And if they wanted to, they could make him manifest into a demon against me. Or have a demon come through talking to me with using his voice. And then he could go back. And then he wouldn't remember that just happened. And, and so that's called manifesting. This happens all the time out there. So they see you come into the store, then they turn into a demon. And they're going, nyum, 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 nyum. or they'll say something that only you would know, right? To try to freak you out. And then, you know, you rebuke that demon. You don't talk to the person. You just talk right straight to the demon. And then they go back to normal. Then you just kind of like, you know, you, you, you go on, right? You, 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 you did the right thing. But it's kind of mind-blowing how they can see you ahead of time because they're outside of time. And then the ones that are really weak, they can just manifest, they could just use them as a, as a sock puppet, you know, and appear and confront you. And then they go away. This happened with this lady that used to live next door here. You know, her demon came out and screamed at me. And what, what, what were the, how do I know? Because it was a different voice, not the same voice. It was a, more of a male voice saying, do you need Jesus? To, so do you need Jesus to save you? Like that. Completely out of the blue. A non sequitur. Now, I did not rebuke the demon. I should have, but I, I kept trying to be polite, and that was a disaster. And then later on... Um, it was like that one night time we tried to have dinner together. We couldn't do it because the spiritual warfare was so insane, so intense. And then uh, somebody that worked for her came back to the house over here with us. And, and I said, wow, she really hates me, you know. And she goes, that's because you won't play the game. And, and so that was like a confirmation of what I just went through, which was very unpleasant I meant nobody any harm. I just meant to, you know, have dinner, share, you know, have a little chit-chat. I mean, if the, my God, was that such a crime? 
try to be social, sociable, but it had to turn into it had to turn into this epic battle of light versus dark. I mean, right before my eyes, it turned into this demonic battle, you know. And, and I'm like, and this woman was unrepentantly, you know, this this friend of hers that was actually working for a young lady. Well, maybe not much of a lady, but I mean, she was. Her name was Gaia, so it was kind of a weird, right? You know, you, you're getting it, right? She was fine with it. You know, I'm the one that's the problem. I'm not playing the game. I'm the one that's causing the trouble. Not being demonically possessed and doing all manner of evil, that's fine. <laughs> that's why I never, that's why family dinners were ended. I couldn't do them because, you know, the, the, the warfare was so insane that just got curtailed after a while. Now there's no family. <laughs> so, you know, but I just, yeah, it's so funny how they being evil, you know, and their intentions and their words and their threats and all their stuff, you know, threatening to kill you and all this other stuff. And then, and then they say, you see what you made me do? It's your fault. This, you know, you're the one that caused all this. I'm like, wait a second. Me not wishing anyone any harm and just kind of minding my own business is the problem because I'm being sociable and nice and, and whatnot. You, being demonic and with murderous intent, are fine. It's that I won't play the game, so therefore um, I deserve to be murdered. And you're mad because I, I, I won't let you. I'm calling you on it. I see. Well, that would mean that if humanity is like that, humanity is ruined. They have no conscience. They have no life. They're zombies. They're gone. If that's the case, they're just puppets of this evil force, of Satan, of the, uh, of the principalities of wickedness in high places. And wherever you, know, wherever you go, they're there, ready for you to ruin your day, to ruin your life, to kill you, to make you sick. And when you do get hurt, they love to be a nice listening ear. They say, tell me all about it. And as you explain the horror horrors that you've been through, ooh, they deliciously lap it up and they, ooh, they get such power out of it. You thinking you have a confidant there. You thinking you have someone you can spill your guts to. You thinking you have some, a compassionate ear waiting to give you comfort. No, my friend. You're playing into the hands of the enemy. It's, you've turned into a ritual. You now are feeding the dragon by trying, just trying to get some sense and some light on the troubles that you've had lately. And they're all too willing to wait there. And, and as you describe your troubles, they, they inhale, they, they puff up, they, they get a sheen, they, they get strong as you reveal yourself because they need to feed and you are the meal. And then you ask about it and they say, I don't know what you're talking about. You sound really crazy. You, maybe you need some therapy. You need some prescription medication. These kinds of thoughts about people, this is all paranoid thinking. This is crazy talk on your part. I see. Now, I think today's download was uh, not crazy talk at all, but I think it's very pertinent talk. And I, and I, I think that um, I have described some of the obstacles and maybe given some of you gang-stalking people that can't get any justice uh, because it's so uh, difficult to pin down. Maybe some of the how it works in the spiritual realm, in the spiritual uh, interactions between people. Most people are slaves, to the, to the hive, to the, to the system. And what's needed in the world today are nonconformists who, who, you know, if you're intelligent, you don't conform. That's, that's why they want to rid intelligence from um, the earth because they don't want people to, con they want people to conform. But you can't do it if you can see through it. You have to be hypnotizable. If you've been traumatized as a child, a lot of times you can't be hypnotized because you've been, right? Because it's just, it's just, it's, you're wired that way. If you're wired that way, to them, you're ruined. 
You notice how the news media all speaks with one voice? You know, the, the Republicans and the Democrats speak with one voice. You know how all these... This is all signs of social conformity, right? These are all signs of mind control and lack of individual thought. These are all signs of mass stupidity. Because God knows... The, the, the people are dumb as, 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 as all get out. I mean, once you get to that level, you, 